I'm telling you firsthand, it works so incredibly well to cook with a heavier material. It, it makes you a better cook. So you want to cheat? This is how you cheat on becoming a better cook. Hi, Jay from Cook Culture. So this video is a follow-up to last week's video that was more of a PSA for coated cookware. Coated cookware is a major issue. We consume a huge amount of it and it all goes in the garbage. So just to reiterate what I said in that video, coated cookware is all cookware that has a non-stick coating on it. So if it's sold to you to be non-stick with the coating, it is going to become garbage. It may be a month, it may be six months, maybe six years, maybe 10 years, but it will become garbage. You're buying it and it will become garbage. It will not last a generation. And I think that's a problem. I feel we should buy cookware once. I'm a retailer of cookware and I only want to sell you one pan. I'd be really happy if like buy two or three pans, but that's all I ever want to sell you. I don't want to sell you the same pan six times in our relationship. That's not good business for me. However, I think it's bad for the environment. That's a bigger issue. And so to get away from using nonstick, I had a lot of messages that people were like, great, thanks so much for the video. This is excellent. Um, you know, I'm already there, or that was really great to clarify this for me. Thanks so much. What do I do now? So to be really clear on what to do now is that anything outside of nonstick is going to work for you. That's going to be either carbon steel, cast iron or stainless steel. And those, any of those materials will work well. So when you're choosing cookware, the rule of thumb with cookware, if it's heavy, it's good. Some people don't want heavy. So in that, that's where stainless steel will come in. And I'll talk about the benefits of that in a sec. But when you pick up a pan and it's really feather light, it's not gonna be good. That's just simply how it is. Heat, Absorption, retention, and distribution is critical when you're using a fry pan. If you're using a light pan, and then they put a nonstick coating in it, so it buffers everything and it just allows you to cook whatever way you want, then you can use those really cheap little $25 pans from Canadian Tire and they're fine. But when you're buying quality pan, like cast iron or carbon steel, weight matters. And it's best if you just try to get around using a heavier pan. It may seem awkward at first because all you've had is light pans, but I'm telling you firsthand, it works so incredibly well to cook with a heavier material. It, it makes you a better cook. So you wanna cheat? This is how you cheat on becoming a better cook. The trade-off though is that you have to maintain it. Outside of stainless steel, and start with stainless steel, stainless steel, is totally neutral. It will cook whatever you want in it. It's easy to look after. It's fairly easy to clean. The trick though with stainless and with all of these, and this does blow some people's minds, is that you do not cook with olive oil. Use olive oil, excellent oil, but even the fancy stuff that people are like, oh, I only buy the most premium, that's actually the worst for cooking. The fruitier and the more fiber and the more, more taste there is to it, and the thicker and the greener, the worse it is for sticking. If you actually buy really, really cheap stuff from somewhere like say Costco, it could work just fine and you wouldn't have an issue, but it can. I'm just saying, not saying to do that, but I'm saying that you can get away with it. Really fine olive oil can be fairly neutral. The really good stuff, don't waste also your money on that and cook with it. Use it to drizzle to finish. It's got amazing flavor and it's really high quality and got lots of nutrients in it. So it's also really calorically dense, so don't drink it, but it's excellent to use after cooking. So we recommend using a grapeseed oil and you can use some other seed based oils. Coconut oil is a tiny bit questionable. Some people have success, some people don't. Really depends I think on the brand. So I haven't been 100%, but grapeseed oil across the board works really, really well. And the same thing with canola oil, but people seem to appreciate grapeseed oil more. So we recommend grapeseed oil and it works great. So just go that route, keep it easy and it works. So with stainless steel, it has a tendency to burn a little bit faster or easier, even with a heavier gauge. This is a five ply stainless steel, aluminum, aluminum alloy in the core, 
Um, this is, happens just to be the industry by Zwilling. And it's an excellent pan. I have used it a thousand times. I really enjoy it. Uh, and it will do many things very well. It's excellent for browning. Uh, it's excellent. It deglazes wonderfully. Uh, you don't have to worry about stripping your, your uh, finish to it. Like if you've created a seasoning on cast iron, um, it's a really good overall workhorse. And it comes in sets. If you buy a 10 piece set, that is a really good value all the time. You get a couple of fry pans. They're excellent to have. For me, they're not my primary pan. I love them and they work fine. I will use them, but they're not my go-to. They used to be when I was younger. When I was first learning how to cook, this is what I was used to and I was comfortable with, but trends have changed too. You know, even 20 years ago, 30 years ago, uh, 30 years ago when I was learning to cook, you know, cast iron was either non-existent or it was in people's basements. So it wasn't, you know, even in my world of selling cookware, it wasn't just around. Now cast iron is the pan of choice. So in choosing a cast iron pan, there's now a big wide amount of price in cast iron. So you can start with a really inexpensive 10 inch lodge pan that can cost you as little as you know, 35, 40 bucks, which is absolutely awesome. Tremendous value, an American made, heavyweight, excellent pan, but it's, doesn't have the best finishing. It's a bit sharp on the edges, a little bit shallow. The finish on the inside is not amazing. The, the texture, it's not really that even or level. Um, so it, it works well, but you know, for me out of a 10, I would give it maybe a six, six and a half. I would absolutely use it if we are away. Like last time, for instance, we went with a family, went and stayed with some friends down in Palm Springs. This is all that the place had. I was in heaven. There was two large fry pans, happy as a pig in poop. But if I am going to say, okay, that's excellent. It's a great starting point. What do I get for better? You then go towards carbon steel. So this is a Dubois Mineral B 11 inch fry pan. I think it's about 11. Uh, well seasoned, well used, well loved, in good shape, ready to go. Uh, I love the shape of these. They are perfect for um, you know, working a pan on the stove top. They are comfortable in the hand. The handles don't get overly hot. You can kind of keep them in your hand where all of the other ones, the handles get hot. You need a handle helper. Um, it's, a, it's an excellent hard working pan. I find that the seasoning doesn't take to them as well as cast iron. So you can develop even a better seasoning on cast iron. Technically, I'm not totally sure. I have asked people that I thought knew. I see the people that understand about carbon steel or they understand about cast iron. And I haven't found that one person yet to tell me the difference between exactly why. However, carbon steel just doesn't seem to season as well. It seasons well, as well as cast iron. So seasoning is, is good. Uh, the pan shape is excellent. I really enjoy using it. This comes into up to a 14 inch fry pan, so a really big fry pan. So it's an awesome, heavy duty workhorse and pricing is excellent. This is about an $85 pan, $88 pan, I think. You know, pricing is tremendous comparatively to, you know, say take even an industry or comparatively on the market, all clad. You know, like you take a pan, they're gonna be up into $200 or so for that pan. So half price. Uh, and I would grab it before I would grab that one. So that would be my next go. And then from there, we start getting into the higher end cast irons. So cast iron, this is a newer one called Black Lock. Black Lock comes from Lodge. They realized that there was a, a higher end market being made. So Lodge designed a pan called Black Lock and it goes back to the heritage. It's an older design from 1896. This is the they say the templates in which were used are the casting molds that were used from back then. Um, they've created it light. So it's a lighter pan to try to cut the weight. This is a little bit of a, of a new style. They're trying to make a denser cast iron and making it lighter so it is more comfortable in the hand. And the Black Lock is definitely a solid step up from its baby brother, the Lodge. I love the shape comparatively. It's much deeper and it's sharper edges. Um, so you can get more volume in it. I find the handle is a little bit more comfortable. 
I find the handle holder is a little bit bigger, but they haven't really done a whole lot with improving the way in which they make their finish. I thought they would have polished the inside if they were gonna do a higher end piece, but they didn't. Um, and so it's, it's not up there at my favorite, but it's definitely a step up and I've enjoyed using it. it it's a good pan. Um, so I find, you know, for the price, it's in that good range. So I'm, I'm happy with it. Uh, then we start getting up into my favorites. So enamel cast iron. I am a, just a huge fan of enamel cast iron. Good quality stove, Le Creuset. You know, I have nothing against Le Creuset. I per prefer stove. I think their designs, their color are just that much better. That's why we carry stove and not Le Creuset. Um, however, when it comes to their skillets, there's really no difference. So I find, you know, my only negative to the stove skillets is that they're a little bit shallow. So for me, I just find they're a little bit shallow. The 12 for getting more deep depth starts getting too big. The 10, tiny bit shallow. Most people really don't care, obviously. It's the best selling skillet that we sell. We sell loads and loads of these. They come in lots of great colors. Uh, it's super easy to maintain. The enameling goes to seasoning really nicely. So it seasons up beautifully and really easy to look after. Uh, so super classic shape. They call it an American grill pen because it's made in an American style. This is not something typically that you'd find in Europe. Uh, they make it for the American market. Uh, the pour spouts, bit of a design. I don't think they need to be there. I would take the pour spouts out. I think they're just a little bit of an of a issue. People think, oh, I like to put my, my wooden handle spoon on there. Like, sure, you can put that actually anywhere. Um, it's a design feature and it doesn't really pour any better. So a bit of a waste of time in my opinion. Uh, however, you know, amazing pan and we sell it really well. Uh, so definitely my second to last go-to, if that makes sense. My, my, my second choice. My number one first choice that we carry. And to those that follow us, the field skillet. So this is my number one. People know it's my number one favorite. The reason this is my number one favorite is actually really interesting. I had a long conversation with the owner of Field, that's a previous YouTube video that we have, uh, Stephen Muscarella, and I was pushing him on that. <laughs> and I, I didn't really think it through what I was pushing him on, but I'm like, Stephen, why do I love your pan so much? Tell me. And he's like, man, I can't. It's all the little things in which we've done that have come together, and because of all those little things is why you love the pan. So it's not one thing, it's all the little things, and I can't pinpoint that for you. It's like, okay, well that actually makes sense because when you look at all of the aspects of the pan, I love it, right? So the handle is a perfect size, the handle, the design, it's got a little bit of a, of a, uh, a ridge on the pan and sits in the handle so nicely. It's rounded just so perfectly. You know, the handle helpful is, is big enough but not cumbersome that if you need to use it, it's, it's excellent. The splay to the edge of the pan is absolutely gorgeous, splayed out, so it pours beautifully. And it also, when you're scraping or, or pulling anything in, you can get a spatula around in there beautifully. But the inside finish to this pan is just the best thing I've ever used. So he tells me there's a little bit of a secret to the way they do that, and he's tried lots of different things. And I didn't push him on telling me the secret because I kind of don't want to know. Um, but the finish, to the inside of this and the way in which it works to cook with, but also then to clean and maintain is just absolutely brilliant. It's the best pan that I've ever used ever. And I just absolutely love them. And fortunately we're getting the same response. You know, they do, we are customers that have these pans, just absolutely love them. So, you know, they're our most premium pan out of all of the ones here, but they are quickly becoming our number one selling pan. You know, we're quickly at the point where like, wow, we just can't really keep these things in stock because of how they're built. They're just such an amazing product. They are heavy, but light at the same time. They're just the right sort of, of weight. So, you know, they're not as light feeling as what I think the black lock is that I think might be a tiny bit too light and why I don't lean to it all the time. But the field just has a absolutely perfect weight. And, and to him, he is quite scientific about it, to Steven, the owner. And he felt the calculation of his weight to quality was just perfect. And I tend to agree with them. You know, I, I've used all the different sizes of these now. Um, they go from a six inch right up to a 12 inch and they work incredibly well. So that is the layout of what we have. And 
like there are other brands that are similar to Field. They're maybe not quite as good. I actually haven't tested them all yet and I'm actually on a mission to do that. I'm going to order some of the high-end competitors of Field because I really want to be able to talk to that. But, and they're all doing the same thing. Um, but you know, from, from my point of view right now, and also what's available here, we're the only dealer in Canada that carries Field and it's hard to get some of the other high-end brands that are similar because they're American made and they're stocked and sold out of the States. Um, so you know, we have this and that's uh, a great thing. So I hope that helps on going over the different types of materials and the different grades and why you'd spend from you know, 400, sorry, $40 to $250 on a pan uh, and the difference. Um, you know, it is hard when you don't have them in your hand because they have a certain fit and feel which is absolutely gorgeous, like a great pair of shoes. Um, so also for, for maintenance, for all of these guys, we recommend using a chainmail scrubby. And this one is a silicone chainmail, silicone in the middle chainmail. Uh, we also carry now the field chainmail that is a lighter, more delicate, uh, hardworking uh, chainmail cloth that's made in the States. And then we recommend using Buzzy Wax, and this is a wax paste with oil in it. And this is what we put on for pre and post seasoning. And then pre and post seasoning is something I've gone over in other videos of how to actually season and maintain cast iron. And the, that comes in a regular and also an organic for some people that want to have 100% or, organic oils. So I hope that helps clarify, hey Jed, what do I do next after wanting to get away from cast iron, sorry, from, from nonstick. Um, these are the types of pans that I highly recommend and there isn't anything really on the market outside of these pans. This is kind of what covers. So wherever you're shopping, wherever you are watching this, go to your local high-end boutique, hopefully family-run local retailer, and ask them what they have for cast iron. And like I was saying, don't, please don't be too particular about the brands that I have here. If they're of this kind of quality or, you know, Send me a note underneath this video. If you want me to give you my recommendation on that one, I pretty much know all on the market that is of this sort of genre, uh, and I can help you with that. But the, the point here is to help you transition away from using nonstick to using something that's gonna last you for generations. So the last thing I wanted to say, and I touched on it earlier, is that transitioning from nonstick to these types of cookware takes some work. There's some effort that needs to go into learning how to maintain these, how to clean them, how to look after them. We've got lots of different videos. Please check them out. You can always get a hold of us. We have lots of handouts that go with each one of these that go uh, when they go home with you. And our commitment to you is that you will be successful. If you struggle and you haven't been able to make it work, we will work you through that. We have done that with thousands of customers and we're happy to do that to make sure that you use one of these pans successfully. So what I'm saying there, is that there's absolutely no excuse at all, whatever it is, there's no excuse to not getting away from your nonstick pan. So thanks so much for listening. <laughs>